Tonight, the federal government entered into a shutdown because of Congress's failure to pass an annual budget resolution. I know, I know you've been hearing about it for weeks. How much will it impact your life? We want to know what you think. Is a government shutdown really a big deal? Tweet us right now at Take Part Live, and we'll read your answers live on the air. Joining me and Kara now to discuss this are contributing writer for Salon, David Dayen, comic and actor, Cooper Barnes, and political analyst, Peter Matthews. Welcome to the show, everybody. Thanks for having Thank us. You Thank so you so much for being here. This shutdown will not affect Social Security. It's not going to affect Medicare payments, but there are still a lot of ways it could impact you. That's what we're discussing in the first part of our panel, So What? And here are some of those ways. If you were planning on taking a trip to a national park, you could forget that. They're going to be closed. And that goes for the Smithsonian Museums as well. If you were hoping to hear about a government-backed mortgage, you might have to put your home ownership plans on hold because federal loan processing is going to halt too. The CDC will have limited resources to respond to an outbreak, so cross your fingers for a mild flu season. And perhaps the most disturbing part of a government shutdown is the way it will impact the Special Supplemental Nutrition Program for Women, Infants and Children, also known as WIC. Federal payments for the program will stop leaving states to figure out how and if to supply the money. In, in fact, the reason it's there is because not only is the Congress divided, but the House is divided between radical right-wing Tea Party Republicans and moderate Republicans. And there's a big battle going on right there. And it's the Tea Party Republicans that will not give in and vote for a continuing resolution. They want to get rid of Obamacare. That's their main goal, and they're going to stick to it. And they're in safe districts. That's a problem also. Cooper, how do you see all this? Wait, that's just <laughs> yeah. a problem. Then. You know, I did get some tweets from some viewers of the show. This is what people are saying about the shutdown on Twitter. Dave McNally says, it's a really big deal. I'm a federal employee facing furlough after losing, uh, after losing 11 days of pay to sequestration. I'm not happy. Um, I also got one here from Patrick Barbano who said, these legislators are failing at their jobs. They should be able to be fired, just like the rest of us. And lastly, here from John Lancer, who has a different opinion, the U.S. is in the fiscal twilight zone as it is. $17 trillion debt, shutting it down seems reasonable. We have to have a balance of powers in our government. We have to have a separation of these powers. I mean, what would it be like if the executive branch also had control of how we spend our money in this well, country? Well, that would include what's called an item veto, which, by the way, was, was in place for about a year and a half until the Supreme Court said that it was unconstitutional for the president to be able to strike out certain items and let the rest of it go through. The governor of California has that and it actually works better to get things done. So we made a look at that again and you have to have a constitutional amendment to bring the item veto back again. But the real problem really is divided government as David said and I, at those other times he talked about earlier years, these guys worked out compromises. They worked out on common ground and they settled it in a few days. This is a situation where you got the right wing Tea Party Republican Party out of uh, so many safe districts in the Midwest and the South where they, can, they don't have to fear being defeated in the election. They can do whatever they want, and the people there will vote for them on a right-wing basis, so right-wing, complete extreme basis. And that's a problem, because they don't want to budge. Well, they're you, not, well, not big on compromising I mean, these days. Like, he's five years in, they're not going to have, like, a recount. Like, well, just one more thing, with these layoffs, there's money being taken out of the economy, and there won't be enough demand to keep the economy, to get it going again. Right. And we're in a big recession right now still. This great recession is not over yet. And if you take money out with these employees being, yeah. you know, furloughed and things, it's a very bad situation. It Making a bad situation a, even worse right will now. will have a yeah. major economic impact, probably 0.3% uh, uh, of GDP in the fourth quarter, yes. something like that. But uh, there's a cruel logic to it. I mean, Republicans were also elected by people all over the country, and they think they have a right to try to advance their agenda. The problem is, is that we don't have an accountable government, really. That's true. Uh, we have a situation where we have the ability for a divided government, unlike parlamentary democracies, parliamentary system like, like in, in Britain, Britain, in Canada, Germany, if there was a yeah. problem with the budget, they would have another election. Right. And the winner of the election would get to implement their agenda. And then if we liked it as the public, we would get to keep them in. And if we didn't like it, we get to vote them out. Absolutely it's a novel right. system. Yeah. One of the Absolutely. things many people at home, I think, are feeling right now is that during a shutdown, you know, you might feel like things are out of your hands. There are still things you can do and ways to prepare for future shutdowns. That's what we're going to discuss in the last part of our panel. Take. And the federal courts are going to remain open, at least for the first 10 days of the government shutdown. So if you're dodging taxes, those charges are still coming after you. What's your best, uh, your best advice, Peter, for you know, people that are saying, is there something I should do differently during a government shutdown? On an individual level, maybe they could be more cautious about how they spend their money and save more of it. But more like uh, collectively, they have to get up there, make those phone calls, those emails, those tweets out there to Congress members and say, get on the ball. We're paying your salary. You're getting paid during the shutdown. And yeah, the other but, people are, are, but, but people members of Congress are listening, though. People don't want the shutdown well, in the first place. Let me so give you an example. Make a difference? Those Tea Party districts where there's a one-sided vote, 
There's a lot of people that could register to vote, a lot of young people in college not registered to vote in those districts in the South. Get them registered to vote and say, well, throw these bums out next time and they keep this going. And this is a record we're going to remember. Do you have to do it. Do you agree the number one indicator of somebody being elected to Congress is that they're already in Congress? Right. As far as financial reform, the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, the one agency that was created out of financial reform, uh, is funded uh, through fees. It's not funded through appropriations, and so they're going to be open, too. Peter said uh, save a little bit extra money, maybe stash it under your, your mattress. Anything else they could do? Uh, I mean, certainly the, the activism of calling Congress and, and, and saying get and, with the program. And organizing is, is, on the ground. And organizing and is using probably your, a good thing your to do. social media, use your grassroots college campuses to get people in those southern districts where these Tea Partiers should not keep getting a free ride and they can really make a difference. Students can make a difference. Young people can make a real difference. Is they this, can organize. Is this to uh, put a stop to this or just to, how to, just to survive it? To clean out the house. It's, called, it's time to clean house in those districts especially and uh, get young people activated and motivated and they will make a difference. Young people have led revolutions throughout the world, peaceful, nonviolent ones, mostly. That's what I'm advocating. But young people can do it, my friend. Look at those countries like Tunisia, other places in the world. And with the um, with the shutdown happening, you can't get a gun permit during the shutdown, so it'll it will be nonviolent. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, good, that's a good thing. If we can look at like one silver lining. Is that during the shutdown there will only be like two thousand gun murders not, next month? So that's progress. Not people. to mention all the good work point. for graphics uh, artists who right, have specialties the, in countdown. Special countdown. countdown. Yeah. That's a spike. That's and on that note, spike. if you uh, are a good graphic artist, give us a ring. If you've uh, been furloughed during the shutdown, for more, thank you all so much, very much for being here. Thanks, for more information on how you could take part, log on to takepart.com/live.